started our career in 68, we wanted to change architecture immediately and radical. <laughs> we thought about having a sign reaching out into the main street, telling everyone, hey, there, there is something going on. We are using roofs in our work, not only as a protection element. And that comes actually from the idea of Corbusier and Niemeyer. Both of them liberated the roof from being just a protection element. A friend of mine, Lars Lerup, said that there are three uh, kinds of architects. One is uh, working on the basement. Holland, who is digging into the earth. Friends of mine, Rams, working on the in-between. And the most avant-garde architects, they are concerned with the roof. Sa is concerned with the roof. It was an office for a lawyer, actually a very conservative lawyer. And we, we just interpreted a new corner solution. I think it was one of the first deconstructivist architecture in the world. When we finished our studies, uh, it was in May 68, when Paris, uh, when the students in Paris revolted against the establishment, uh, we thought, okay, why can't we revolt as well against the architectural establishment? Sitting in an airplane, going back to Vienna, we flew through a very blue heaven and only one cloud was almost hanging on the wing of the plane. And this cloud changed constantly the shape. And this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to have architecture changing like clouds. And therefore, we will call ourselves Himmelblau, which means sky blue, but it's not a color but the idea of having architecture changing like clouds. When we started to build, we made parentheses, Himmelblau, it changed to Himmelbau, from blue sky to building the sky. We always wanted to step in our own head, proving that our ideas are real. They look fantastic, they look utopian, but they were thought to be built. Building schools for young people, places where uh, young people can get in touch with art. It's a feedback system. Influences society, then the society influences art. I would call it a point of departure. public school there with public spaces, then Frank's Disney Hall, then the MoCA makes the strip of Grand Avenue to a kind of cultural strip. This fly tower 
example, the theater becomes an icon for the school, meaning this art school shows that the community of LA is supporting her. It's right in the opposite of the, the bell tower of Monet's Cathedral. So very, very sculptured. One of my role models is, of course, Brancusi. He doesn't work on in a closed system. He breaks it up. There was a, a sculpture for blind. Yeah, this is a head-shaped or egg-shaped stone with a little, little curve in it. There is a relationship between art and architecture. It always was. Form is the expression of architecture. Like I said, only the functionalism and modernistic way of thinking brings us back to the stupid box. Our society is much more complex than just being put into a box. Our society exists on divergences and differentiations. Architecture is not nature and has to serve completely other meanings than nature is doing. Architecture is a three-dimensional expression of our society. The school in LA, it was an invited competition. For the library, a cone is a kind of very fitting element because it forces the concentration. The campus idea was uh, actually the master plan. The program was very defined on one hand, but we placed the, the library in the middle as a turning point. There are spatial sequences that you can follow. And then double cone is one of my favorite spatial vocabulary. And I figured out that also comes from Corvisi. And next to the library is the student cafe. We always said that this school must have public places as well. And I think this was one of the reasons we got the commission. Not only because of security, a reason enclosed. Great kind of symbol that art is not excluded from our daily life. It's integrated and it's an integrative element as well.